Right, so we're taking a look at occupational hazards and um, injury in the workplace is a very, very significant problem. This morning I have uh, Eric Delano Alipo, who's the executive director at Help Law and um, he will help us to understand this um, better. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's How are you? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it's good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. So um, what is the legal definition of uh, an occupational hazard? Um, what it means basically to the layman is um, the kind of risks and dangers that are associated with various types of works. So when people are working in their workplaces, the kind of things that can happen to them, the injuries that can occur to them, that is the hazards, and they are specific to specific type of jobs. Okay. Uh, for instance, if you work in a corn mill, very likely you might grind your finger, okay. or a finger or two. Okay. So that would be associated with that kind of job. Okay. So well, if you are perhaps um, maybe a carpenter and you have to climb and uh, maybe try to roof a tall building, you might fall on a right. scaffolding. So that is also associated with the kind of job. So the hazards are associated with specific type of jobs and okay. there are specific types of So basically of injuries that you sustain uh, in the course of your work. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah. Um, how would you grade them, um, let's say, from average to severe? Are there certain jobs that will say don't have a, a lot of risk associated and then others that are very high risk and so on and so forth? I think the nature of the job itself will tell the kind of risks that are associated with Just like with the it. examples you've just given us. Yes, but when you are injured, the kind of uh, injury that will paralyze you completely, you may not be able to work, uh, would also be categorized in a particular uh, category and it will attract the type of compensation that would have to help you to sustain your life for the rest of your life perhaps because you may not be able to work any longer. So it depends on the injury that you sustain and also we have to be sure that the injury is specific, it's associated with the type of work you are doing. Mm -hmm. It's not from extraneous uh, activities. Right. Yeah. And why should um, an, the employer bear the cost of uh, the injury or whatever it is? I mean, it, it would be right to um, assume that with certain occupations, just uh, for, for instance, um, you'd expect that a, a construction worker yeah. would have in contemplation the risks associated with that kind of work. So yeah. if they should fall from a scaffolding or any such thing, I mean, it, it comes with the job. So why should the employer be the one to bear the cost? Well, if it comes with the job, it means that the, the employee has no, no choice. Has, has He can't do anything about it or he can do very little about it. And so it is associated with the job. And so it may happen anyway, mm -hmm. no matter how careful the employee is. Exactly. And so the employer has to be responsible for such activities. That is a liability that they have to bear because you provide a job that is associated with certain risks and uh, there's nothing the employee can do about it. They can be careful enough unless you can establish, establish that they that are negligent. Due to the yeah, they are negligent. Employee's own yes, negligence. And, and I believe that the type of negligence that would even make the employer completely free of liability will have to be very great. Um, I believe in every case the employer would have to bear some liability. Mm. Can you give us a them. little uh, uh, an example of um, what the employee would have to do to contribute to that negligence? Well, if take you any, if, any occupation. Well, if, if you have, uh, uh, for instance, if you if you work in a uh, if you work in a situation where you have to put on a boot, for instance, uh -huh. and the boot is provided by the employer, and, and you don't to, put and it you on. don't put it on, and you injure yourself then, of course, uh, clearly you didn't take the precautions you need to take and the precautions, and your employer has provided all the precautions, has advised you and you know what to do and you don't do it, then you have assumed, we call it, you have assumed the risk. You know, there's a risk over there and you're reckless and then you walk into it, then it will be difficult to let the employer bear the full cost. Um, so the employer may not bear any liability at, at all. all. Yes, I, I believe so, yeah in, yeah. in certain circumstances, okay. they may not have to bear liability. What about um, acts of God, things that just happen by nature? It's just a, a freak accident. Everything that's supposed to be done has been done. All the processes, everything has been followed to uh, the letter. But something just happens, an act of God, and there's an accident or an incident. Um, I am not very sure what the law provides specifically for that, but I, I do believe that in situations like that, if you find yourself at the workplace, whilst still. it occurs, yeah, the, the employer, employer will have to help, yeah, to some extent, that okay. is what I believe. Mm -hmm. I am not very sure on the position of the law on, on that, but I, I do believe that so long as you are at the workplace, 
working diligently and it happens in the course, then, of, yes, your in the course of your work, mm. I believe that the employer has to bear some responsibility. Or at least mm. they have to help you on humanitarian grounds, uh, as we normally see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's look at it from this other angle as well. What if you are in the workplace, but the accident occurs outside of your job description? Let's say, for example, um, what example can I use? Um, Okay, still on the construction um, site. Let's say you are a carpenter, yes. um, but you go and help your friend who is a, uh, a mason, for yeah. instance, to yeah. do his work and an accident happens. Would the employer still be liable for that incident? Yeah, because you see, th these matters are matters of the law as well as, uh, um, again, humanitarian issues also. So, of course, if you are not supposed to be at a place and you are the right place at the wrong time or at the wrong place at the wrong time, perhaps, then you have to know that you are also assuming a risk. You are, you are being negligent because you are not supposed to be there. Exactly. You are, supposed you are to not be working employed in a different to do department. that particular job. Exactly. And you leave your own station and go to, to go another and help station. somebody else. And then you yes. are assuming a so risk. So in that case, will the employer be absolved of all um, uh, liability? Be because, you see, because these are matters of law, I believe that if you go and hire a lawyer and go to court, mm -hmm. Um, it will be litigated and perhaps you might be able to get something or you might not get anything, anything. at all but my guess is that if you are if you are not uh, Where you're doing what be, you're supposed to be doing it would be difficult yeah, you know, yeah then it should be very difficult for you to claim anything at all from the employer okay so in a case where someone has done everything they're supposed to do they've put on all the safety apparatus that's been provided and there's an accident yeah. what is the process to go through well um the process would be the, the the law is the in fact for every every employee that is engaged for more than six months or six months or more would have to have an employment contract you know the contract is supposed to spell out uh, the responsibilities and duties of the employer and employee Terms, uh, about all the obligations everything. and all of that yes so if it, i believe that most workers and most employers are not providing that they are not signing such employment contracts because there are no jobs and people walk into all kinds of jobs and all kinds of conditions but the contracts are supposed to spell these things out clearly so whenever anything occurs you just go back to the and contract you know and refer exactly. to it and then you know where to go okay. yeah but i i do believe in, in workplaces where they they have insured um, the place it shouldn't the be insurance a yeah insurance should take care of it but i believe that the every organization has their own internal uh, ways of, yeah so you just have to inside. follow yeah the procedure i believe the hr departments would um, guide every worker to know how to make the claims if you try to make a claim internally and you are not getting it then you have to move outside perhaps go to charge labor commission or perhaps even go to court go to court yeah okay That's it. now you mentioned something um, when you were speaking about if you are or you've been employed for a term of more than six months yes what if it's not up to six months your your uh, employment contract is not you haven't been there for you haven't been in that um job or position for six months yeah first of all the, the six months doesn't have to be uh, a continuous yeah period if you if you are working a number of days that that would be we'll equivalent to, to six months. months you need to have but this is just the creation of the law uh, like i have said already a lot of people do not have this and they are they are working but if you are working for less than that period well it's a choice you may in fact when they want to even employ for three months you may ask for a contract if your employer is willing to give you one but it's not required by law to give you one but your employer may give you one but if you do not have that, it doesn't mean that you do not have rights. You still have rights under the law. If you are working for less than six months, you are engaged as a casual labor for a month or two, you still have rights. And so you have to resort to those rights under the law. Mm -hmm. You can also, if you, for most people, and I believe the people we are, we are speaking to are people who, um, perhaps most of them are not literate. Uh, so these are people who, when you keep talking about the losses, the losses, they, they do don't not understand. Yeah. So what they need to do is to go to institutions that can help them. Go to Shirat, for instance, go to Labor Commission and say, well, I have this situation, and if it is in the law, they will just pull the Must law Must you up. necessarily have a contract? If you don't have a contract, what happens? Um, let's say, for example, um, back to the construction field again. Yeah. Uh, there are some people who work um, on a daily basis. Uh, yeah. they, they are termed uh, per, per day, by, yeah, day, day, by, day, by yes. day. Yes. Such people, what happens to them? Well, they, they, they only do not have written contracts but they do have contracts so long as somebody so long has asked you to come and work okay. yeah and then you have also started working so the employer is still yes, um, he responsible you. for them to yes them. exactly yes he owes you some responsibility because he has asked you to work and you have agreed to work and you are performing that specific performance what he has asked you to do you You're are doing, doing it and so yes of course there's, there's there's a contract between you except that that contract is not written 
and it's not required to be written by law. But you still have law. a claim yes, of sorts. Yes, okay. so you can. Uh, what what are the compensation packages like that? I mean, how much do people usually receive with such cases? I, 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 can't, I can't mention the figure. It will depend on the depend injury. Case by case. Yeah, yeah, case by case. It will depend on, uh, like I said, you can, some people go all the way to court. And depending on the injury, the court may determine. And also, you may have medical bills and all of that that the employer will have to take care of. And then they also think about whether you whether are able, able to come able back to work, to work again. And, yeah, and all of that. They will put all that into account and then they will, they will, they will fix a figure. Mm. Is it very common here in Ghana, such cases? We see a lot of uh, these cases in our courts. I don't think so. I don't think so. I haven't done one myself. Uh, in all your years of practice? No, I haven't done one because I focus on another, another area of the law. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. But I, I don't think that it is coming up as, as much as it should be coming. So? I, I, I think, first of all, people do not even know their rights. Mm. And, and because they do not know their rights, if they, if they come into situations like this, they go and beg their employers so and they give them something little. Because exactly. sometimes they even think that they are it's not entitled fault. to anything at all. And so if they give them anything little, they just... As long as they give them something little happy. to cover their medical expenses. Yeah. So I, I would, my advice And even go that. back to beg for their jobs back. Exactly. That's what they do. They go and beg. And sometimes they, the employers do not even pay for their medical bills. And then they, they still go back and beg them. And they do not know what to do. This is all my advice is that people should always go to Labor Commission and report. If, if Labor Commission is not able to deal with these issues, they will advise them what to do. So, and then they can go to Shraj and wherever. And wherever you go, you see, one, one thing is I advise people like that because I believe that when you even go to the wrong place, they will direct you as to where you have to go to. So, if you go to an institution and they are not supposed to deal with that particular type of issue, they will tell you where to go. And then you go there and, and then they will help you. But these, these places, do they charge? Do they collect money? Because I'm sure these people would also be thinking, I don't have money, I can't go to these places that you just mentioned, charge, labor commission, and so on and so forth. What is the process they, when you they go there? Are do not you have to pay some money? No, they are not supposed to collect money from anybody. Um, I, I, I know about a story where uh, people do say that when you go to the police station, sometimes they will ask you to bring your own paper for them to <laughs> write or to uh, get a vehicle for them to go and arrest. So yes. I don't know whether if you go to Shra, they will say that we don't have paper, paper to write, so, so bring your bring paper and all of that. But they are not supposed to do so. And so people should work freely. In fact, even if, they, if you go and they ask you to bring money and you don't have money, then you know that you have gone and, and they're asking you to do something that you cannot do. But if you just sit back and say, because I'm scared of going, because they might ask me your money. And that is the same reason why a lot of people do not even approach lawyers. They think that it's very expensive to approach lawyers. But I think that you have to take the very first necessary step. Talk to them first, tell them your problem, and then wait until they ask you money or they charge you. And then you say, well, I can't pay. But people are always scared of taking the step to do what is important. So take the step. And Out then when of you meet them, because problem, they just do not know. Yeah, they, they just have know. the perception we can approach these people. I can't go there. You know, the people Lawyers are, are wearing, expensive. Yeah, wearing coats and ties and yeah, big time guys. So we can approach them. And I think that perception should change. So when people have problems, if you are injured at the workplace, talk to a lawyer, go to labor commission, go to Shraj and, and report. That's it. After talking to your employers and if they are not doing anything about it, just move a step further and talk to some of these institutions. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Eric Delano Alifo yeah. is uh, the executive director at Help Law and he joined us this morning on the chamber to talk about occupational hazards, that is um, injuries that you sustain in your workplaces during the course of your work and you heard it all there are avenues available to you if you are such a victim